We're back with our swan again from Slimbridge Wetland Centre. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you how to do secondary colour correction in DaVinci Resolve and also to use the qualifier here. Now I'm going to do, not going to do anything complicated, I'm not going to go into massive amounts of detail. I'm really just going to quickly show you what it's for. So we've done a primary grade on this image because that was what it looked like originally and this is what it looks like now. And so I'm going to add a serial node onto here again. What have I done? No, that wasn't right. Didn't mean to do that. And I'm going to do that with Alt S. And this is the one where I'm going to do my secondary colour correction. I'm going to go into my qualifier now. And all I'm going to do, as long as I have my qualifier selected here, so I'm going to click on the area that I want to change and do secondary colour correction on. So what I actually want to do here, because this was a very dull day when this was shot, the colours of the beak here, although they look really nice, they were much, much more vibrant. In many cases, they're much, much more, more vibrant. So I want to make them look more vibrant. So all I'm going to do, click on there, and you'll notice that down the bottom, clicking on this color here has automatically selected a certain saturation level, a certain luminance level, and most importantly, in this case, a certain hue. So the actual color that we're going to change. Now, this is no good really because I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So we need to click up here on our highlight section and now we, it masks out the area that we're actually working on and that we are going to correct. So these triangular areas here, if I zoom in quite closely onto these, these triangular, uh, triangular areas here essentially are like a, they're like a feather. It means that it's not a dead stop. The hue isn't only being changed where this line is exactly. It sort of gently eases off here and gently eases off here. And we can change the width of those. Uh, we can change the width of the actual area being corrected. And we can change the center point. So we can move it across the hue scale. And how soft those edges are can be changed using the soft control here. And of course, we can change, change it so that it's a hard stop on one end or a, um, or a hard stop on the other end, basically, as it says, the symmetry of those feathers either side with the symmetry control. So what we really want to do is get as much of the beak accurately shown on the mask here as possible. And we know that the image, it's quite an easy one to do this, really, because if we just check, click off here, we know that the rest of the image doesn't have this orange colour in it. So it's nice and simple to do, which is why I'm using it as a demonstration. Uh, so we can change our centre point, And obviously, if we move it over to green, the beak's not green, so it's not going to show. So we can see that as we move it across here, we get a good, good sort of centre point around about here. Maybe we want to make this a bit wider. But we don't want to start bringing in too much. We can actually make, wow, we can make this incredibly wide because it really is just grey. The rest of the image is grey otherwise. Uh, so we could probably extend it quite far in this instance. I've zoomed in now a little bit more and we can see that our key, given the just adjustments to the hue, is pretty good, but it's not perfect. And what we can probably find here is that the, the saturation level at this point has increased to a point that isn't being captured by our settings down the bottom here because they're really only sort of saying, well, only if it's pretty low saturation are we going to include it in the key. So if I'm going to want to include this bit, I'm going to have to increase my high setting in the saturation to include higher saturation levels. So as I move that across, you see immediately that we get all those that bit that was missing included in. So let's let's improve on that bit. And let's see. We can let's see as soon as we start lowering this down, we get the lower saturation of the image itself. So this is where we've got to be careful. And probably there and take it a little bit further to be safe. And maybe make the left bit a little bit softer so that we don't get those hard finishes. And what we have now is a fairly, it's not bad. I mean, you know, that's what we're looking to key and that's what we've got. And we can now change only this. I mean, we could make this a completely different color if we wanted to. We could start messing about with the color of it entirely, but 
you know, we're not going to want to do that really. So all I'm looking to do here is increase the saturation level of this beak to something just a bit more vibrant, not anything over the top. That might even be a bit too much. So let's just uncheck this now, go out to the whole image. <laughs> and and um, I forgot to put my phone on silent. Never mind. And that looks pretty nice. If we uncheck that, we see the difference. Let me zoom into the beak so you can see it with the whole image. That's with the color correction off, the secondary color correction off. And that's with it on. If you want to go a little bit further, maybe you could make it just a little bit more. Yeah, it's probably a bit. Is that about? Is that okay? Yeah, it uh, looks a bit too much, that, doesn't it, with the rest of the image. So back it off a little bit. All it does is just provide that very subtle difference that makes an image stand out, makes it just a little bit nicer. It's it's that control, that level of control that you get here with these three hue, with the hue, satur saturation, and luminance controls uh, within DaVinci that just make it wonderful to use. So hopefully that's useful for you. And if you do have any questions on this, then comment below. If you enjoy these tutorials, these DaVinci tutorials, then please uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, or, or just give me a thumbs up. I will catch you soon. Bye.